Hello everybody, uh, this is Chris at Chaos and Comics on Instagram, Twitter, sort of on threads, but my threads just broke, so that was fun for a little bit, it was like a less, you know, it was a news feed, but it was less about the news, and uh, it just doesn't work for me anymore, and I don't see what I would have done to have broken any rules, but um, I can see my, my feed, I can see what you guys put, but I can't see any likes, I can't comment or anything like that. I think part of the reason might be uh, because maybe it thinks I'm in the EU, because when Thre Threats came out, like I was awake and I opened it up, you, it, you know, what would have been the middle of the night, I think, here, in, I'm back in Vegas. Um, I opened it up and, uh, and it worked, it allowed me, and I kept reading these articles about it not being allowed in the EU, and I just figured, well, I got an American phone, I guess. And then um, worked for about a week, um, and it was interesting. It was, uh, you know, it was what all these other Twitter clones didn't have; just it had participation in it. Uh, and because I mean, at the end of the day, it's a text app, you know. Like people should just—it feels like anyone, like almost any programmer, could make this. The idea is just like, how do you get people to go there, kind of thing, you know? Um, and I, I really, and people were complaining about the feed, so the feed should be fixed. I think once the algorithm knew what was going on, you'd been fine. Are good enough at least at least as good as Instagram is um, but the, at the end of the day I didn't want any other changes I just want simple I want the feed to be better and then just it's just a text app but anyway it stopped working and I thought it would work when I got back here and it's not worked yet so I've only been here a week so maybe I'll wait the week and a half so whatever anyway I'm technically on there too um, so I just want to do this video just sort of like a Sunday setup I uh, I don't have my kids right now I came back from Europe, but they stayed an extra few weeks. I came back because I had to work, and, you know, I don't like to not have any PTO at all. So uh, I came back to do that. So I've been, like, making more videos. I guess this is what I would do if I were single or if I didn't have any kids. And um, a lot harder to do that. So I don't think I'm going to keep up this pace, um, although I'd like to. But, uh, um, yeah, I definitely can't have just comics sitting around everywhere like I do right now. So comics and books and whatnot. So this is, uh, I just uh, calling it Sunday setup. I would probably do this live, except that I really just don't have a computer right now. I have my work computer and that's where I work. And then mostly everything else I just do on my phone. <clears throat> that's the main reason why, you know, I don't do other live videos like I used to, like I did a, a year or two ago. Um, but I do need a, I do need a computer. So Actually, maybe I don't. I've gone this far with it. Um, but I wouldn't do, like, YouTube videos on my work computer. My other jobs, maybe that would have been a little bit more okay. But anyway, I uh, just want to talk about videos that are coming out and a, and a couple other things. So just sort of my, like, vlog kind of thing. Um, so this week, um, I have um, a couple things coming out. I have a one call, a video called a Manga and Comic Call. So this is really just the stuff that I... All in, I've showed it here and there, but all in one, I just packed it up, talk about the stuff that I bought. Uh, mostly, you know, mostly in Polish, but it's comics, so, you know, you weren't going to read the comic as I held it up into the video screen anyway. So you can hear me um, wax poetic about that. Um, and it's it was a big stack. I'm like, even when I see it, I'm like, geez, how did that? And I made the weight. I made the weight in my luggage. I don't know how, but I did. Um, I had to like remove a video just because I didn't want to answer this in the comments even though it wouldn't have got that much views but uh you know I would have had it answered at least twice maybe three times but I did a video um where I uh was just showing a comic haul of just Sandman Presents um books because I'll just buy them right I'll just buy you know I needed some Star Wars book that I just didn't see or didn't come in or something like that the Nameless Terror so you go to my comic shop and then to make shipping work you know, I bought Sandman Presents, I think it's Petrifax or something like that. And so that one was a Sandman Presents book. But then in the video, I presented the, I bought um, The House of Secrets by Stephen Case, or Stephen Siegel, let's say, um, from the end of 2000s. And for some reason, I thought that was aligned with Sandman. I was making these notes, and I go, oh, this is definitely not Sandman. It just sort of looks like it. So in that whole video, I'm talking about collecting all the Sandman Presents books when I find them for cheap and then so I definitely will be told that they're not so um yeah so maybe I'll do that video again just because it's, it's all it is is showing covers and sort of talking and stuff um then uh 
you know, I decided to combine this uh, this review. Um, so Void Rivals 2. I figured it was, you know, I, I generally won't review books in the middle, but if they're big enough authors, you know, sometimes I follow some of these writers or artists just because um, just they're popular enough and I sort of want my thumb on it. But uh, I sort of combined the reviews for Void Rivals and World Tree. So Void Rivals, of course, is um, uh, Robert Kirkman's new book that's going to mix into the Transformers universe a little bit. And um, and then World Tree is James Tynan the fourth's book, who, you know, just won an Eisner for Best Writer. I don't know about that, but um, I enjoy it, you know. And they're you know, sort of different books, um, pretty cool art. So I just sort of combined them and just to try to get the video to be over five minutes uh, kind of thing. Um, and it's easy to talk about them. It's not one. Normally, if I do that, I'd want to, there'd be some kind of like compare and contrast thing going on. But, uh, but not today. Not, not, uh, not on that one. I just wanted to combine them. Um, and then I just have sitting for a long time. I'm doing that. I don't know if I call it five of series or where I'm just like taking five or so books from Star Wars or Spawn or whatever. and just putting them in one video together. Um, it's better for me too, because most of the time I'm reading those five books at once. Um, for the X-Men one I did a little while ago, I, you know, I read those earlier, uh, a couple of those uh, a few weeks ago. But when I'm reading those kind of wide-eyed sort of series, I think it's um, it's more fun to read them in chunks. I'll talk about that more in a little bit. Uh, so I can churn them out. And then also, I don't, uh, you know, I just want people to be able to skip videos, like if they're not, if they're not interested in it. You know, like five Spawn videos, I know a lot of people don't care about Spawn, you know, so you should, you should skip that video. Um, so I got that one coming out. So the five Star Wars books, uh, those are up. And it's funny because I thought that was out already because I'm thinking about which one it is. And it is what's happening right now in the main books. Because I'll have to do another one for the High Republic when I read those. Um, and I'll try to, I'm going to try to record another one of those today. Um, probably either Spawn or X-Men or I'll talk about these Star Trek books in a second. Who knows? Um, again, not definitely not keeping this pace. So <laughs> the kids come back next week, but we'll see. We'll see if I can make some time for it because these, you know, the, the videos don't take that long and I don't edit. So, um, and then I'll do maybe another video. So I meant to do like one of these five videos, except for, um, some of like the indie, the alternative comics, indie, um, small press. I don't know what the fuck to call it. Um, literary comics there's, there's a bunch of stuff that you just just stuff together that really doesn't belong together necessarily um but i started talking about moam moam was the first one on it i should have brought those over here um actually i'm gonna bring them over here so i don't know where i was there but um so i started doing moam i had the stack of them and then the moam video ended up being like 15 minutes because i talked i actually talked a lot about what was going on in there um you know and i read that book I read that book in Poland, so I read that book two or three weeks ago, and, um, you know, I did a flip through, thought about what I was going to say, right, just to remind me what I liked and didn't like about it, and, um, and then, uh, and then, yeah, it ended up being 15 or 16 minutes. I guess I could have had a longer video. I probably should have some of those out there, like the 50 minute or hour ones, but, you know, I decided to leave it as is, and I just put it out, so... Middle of the day, um, you know, alt comic anthology that is, you know, more than 10 years old on a weekend. So, you know, you could guess what kind of views that got, but who cares? Um, but yeah, so I might do a video where I mix these or maybe I'll do them uh, alone. So this is going to go down for just statement. It'll definitely go down at least for single issues. One of my favorite books of the year it was really good. And then um, 3T, this is good. Now, this is a... Heard about this this group on um, Ray Casares' channel, and um, he uh, he had he has a different one, right? I have that one sitting there. But when you know, it was it was like old school Reptile House, where you got to order from IG. You got to order them from IG. You got to like message the guy, and he'll, then he'll send them to you. Um, so I just got I took I took everything that they had at the time. That was a few months ago. And then um, these came from Domino, along with a couple other things that I'll show. Um, and these were incredibly, these were very surprising. So this is Julia Grafroror, 
and um, this is Veritas. I have a lot to say about each of these, and they're just, you know, about as zine as zine can be kind of thing. Um, I mean, one of them in this small, I think one of these in this small, like, sort of format is like a 24 panel. Oh, yeah, look at this. So, you know, that's just a regular 8 by 11 page. Might even be smaller. And then you, and she's doing like 24 panel work. So I don't know if originally it was big. So these, these will be cool to talk about. And then I also want to show one other thing. Um, actually, I put that in the two read pile. So, yeah, I'll probably, probably do a video at least on one of them, maybe all three. But, I mean, if I did, um, you know, I might get in the same position I did with Moam where I just start flipping through an anthology. And even though the comics are just a few pages, you, you talk for a couple minutes about it and you're done. Um, so, I said that. So, I put a lot of those, I think, the alt ones on the weekend because I just want to talk about them. I don't, I don't expect people to click on those. So, I did that for Psychodrama, too. I think I might have put it on Friday. Um, that's the Gilbert Hernandez book. And, um, you know, that, that one's interesting to talk about because I'm reading Love and Rockets in concert with, you know, the Love and Rockets that come out and Blubber and Psychodrama, you know, and there is a very... There's a stark difference um, to the even, Lo even Love and Rockets, which is still good, the current one that's coming out now, to what was even going on very early. Um, so, you know, it's nice to think about that kind of stuff out loud. Um, and then, um, so I talked about what's going to come out, and um, we were going to go, you know, in the past I've done some movie reviews, and I don't always do them because either I forget or I'm tired after the movie or whatever. Like, I'll go late, you know. Sometimes I'll go after the kids go to sleep and then I'm, I'm going to go catch, you know, the Green Knight or whatever like that. Um, I actually need to watch the Green Knight again because I did go late and I fell asleep at the end. So, um, so uh, we are going to go to the movies and man, like, I guess it's, I guess for you guys, if I say, oh man, Las Vegas was popping on a Saturday night. Uh, everyone was out doing stuff. I guess you guys would think, oh yeah, it's Las Vegas. No shit. But, um... I'm talking about like suburbia Las Vegas. I'm talking about like people who live here in Las Vegas. Every, we go, okay, let's go see Oppenheim, right? This is what my brother's, you know, I told my brother this. I was a little tired I, and I don't want to knock off my sleep schedule. I just got it back on a couple days ago from the jet lag and stuff. And, you know, all the theaters around us, completely full. Even the expensive one where I had to pay like 20 bucks to get in. And I don't think I would have, but that was all full. So, okay, let's do Mission Impossible. Packed. Packed. You know, we could have maybe like sat not close to each other, which I would have been fine with. And he, we even like suggested it for a second. They're like, ah, you know, and then it's the theater's packed. You're sitting in between two people. So, you know, the reason we were going to watch Mission Impossible before Oppenheimer was because we wanted a more empty theater. Um, and then, okay, so we know Indiana Jones is not good, but we want to go see it still. You know, we still want to go see it. And that's in a smaller theater, but of course that's, you know, sold out. You know, there's, it's in like the smallest room in uh in in the theater next to us and you know it's probably 30 seats at the most and uh of course those are all taken so you know the cho that was the choice and I go geez everyone's everyone's out to the movies today and that doesn't even include barbie which is probably be number one i mean i didn't look at those you know but I'll, i'd watch barbie I'll, it'd be funny to go with like my brother to watch barbie but um um so you know it was packed and then we so we go downtown i guess that's more of a vegas kind of thing right where the people outside would look and that was packed too, and that's not as surprising. But we made a mistake, you know. There was um, some confusion. There was supposed to be this uh, metal band called Dreadnought, and I thought they were playing at a place called the Dive Bar, which is like, you know, behind the strip on Maryland Parkway. And then, and then I saw, and I guess this was a different um, band uh, called, you know, at a place called the Usual Place. That's actually on Maryland Parkway too, but it's connected to Fremont. But, you know, we wanted something easy. You know, we didn't super want to go out anyway. And so, okay, there's a Chris Cornell tribute show, um, you know, and all the all the money goes to suicide prevention. But it, it was just so boring. Like, everyone was doing, like, you know, if every person comes up, I get, like, some people like them so much or know them so well, you know, they want to play the deep cuts. And they kept saying that, too. We're, we're going to do a few more of the deep cuts, you know? And it's like, it was like the bad sort of boring um, like really slow stuff and in fact seeing them play it and realizing oh man that was like Chris Cornell like you know 
I'm not even sure if it was Soundgarden slow stuff that I hadn't heard or if it was Kristen Cornell solo stuff, you know, and it was just really boring, you know, and even when they did um, 4th of July, the band that we saw, uh, no good. And then the next guy came, I go, well, maybe the next band will be pretty good. You know, I, I just want to hear like a couple Soundgarden songs, you know, or an Audio Slave song or whatever. Um, and then that guy just came up on a stool. He didn't have a band. It was just him. So I was like, ah, well, we gave our 20 bucks to, um, suicide, the suicide prevention charity. So we're good. So we walk over and we were just going to go late. Anyway, we we're going to go to, uh, this place called the Griffin. I'm with my brother, by the way. And, uh, and, um, and, uh, it was like eighties goth dance night or something like that. So I thought I was going to hear like Depeche Mode and Bauhaus House and stuff like that. Um, so anyway, on the way, you know, they, in, if you walk down Fremont, if you're ever in Vegas, um, you, I mean, Fremont's a little bit better, I think for walking and just hanging out and having beers and stuff, you know, the, the kind of people that I associate with always like Fremont better, you know, um, you know, it's a little too bougie, maybe too expensive in on the strip and you got to be like clubbing or something like that, uh, unless there's a concert there. But they always have these bands playing and it's just really easy to stop and listen to like, you know, the first band is playing like 80s, uh, 80s hair metal, you know, so you hear like pour some sugar on me or something and that's just fun. You know, I could see everyone's having fun and that's fun. I wouldn't listen to most of those bands. And then you walk to the middle and it's all like 90s alt rock, but that's fun. You know, they're playing like Four Non Blondes and Alanis Morissette and Collective Soul, but it's like fun to hear it like when you walk by. You know, and it's fun to see people having a good time, like just listening to these stupid cover songs. And this is outside under the canopy. I realize people, not everyone knows Vegas and particularly downtown Vegas. So it's outside and there's like this big canopy. It's basically a TV screen for about a mile or so. And um, I don't know if it's a mile. Don't listen to me. You know, and so that's a good time. And we walk all the way to the end and we, you know, I eat something. We get to the Griffin, you know, and it turns out Dreadnought was playing in that uh, that metal band that I almost went to, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't in a walking area, um, was playing at the Griffin. And so I would have just, I would have rather gone to that, to be honest, and watch that. And then the eighties techno stuff was okay. And then, and then I'm getting old. So I just got tired and, and, uh, we just went home after that. And, uh, yeah. And the, you know, so it was okay. It was okay to get out again, I guess. And, um, to stay up a little bit later cause I was still falling asleep around eight and stuff. Um, and what else what else um and then i just want to talk about what i'm going to read today so after i record this i don't know when i'm going to put it out or after i'm done recording this i'll probably go hit up starbucks um or maybe one of the hipster coffee places i don't know i do sort of like starbucks though because there's just a seat like you know if i care about the coffee i wouldn't go to starbucks but i'm really there just to read comics and stuff so um I didn't bring this on the plane and I had about 20 more pages. I'll probably read 20 before or something like that. I do want to finish it up. Um, I think, I think pretty easily I've read some other good stuff lately, but pretty easily, um, um, this is my favorite read of the year. So this is book of human insects by Osama Tezuka. And, um, I've said it before and I'll say it again of the people of the people that, you know, have an argument to be on, the comic book Mount Rushmore. So I'm talking about Kirby's, maybe Stan Lee's, maybe Ditko's, um, you know, probably whoever did Valerian. Um, you know, I'm trying to think of Euro comics. Osama Tezuka is, is probably my favorite. He's probably the person that I feel has the most actual talent. Um, and that's writing and art. And then I'm going to, um, read, so I got this, this is the best of 2022 from the comic journal. So this came out a while ago. I had to wait because I bought it mail or I bought it from G Mart mail order. And then I left the country as I mentioned before. And so I'm just grabbing and picking up reading, uh, one or two of the little essays in here. D to be honest, I wish every, I wish every comic magazine was like this, not necessarily a top 10 cause this is, you know, this is all talking about how great these comics are, you know, but I just want someone to just do a nice little thick magazine like this and it only be essays, not necessarily reviews. There could be reviews too. I guess, you know, that's a gray line there of, of just the comics that are happening. And I want more than one person to write about the same comic. You know, there was a, uh, what was it? Taking two by, uh, uh name slips my mind, but it was published by Fanagraphics, 
But then separately, a writer for the Comics Journal wrote like a pretty scathing review of it, right? So the Comics Journal, Fanographics, owned by the same group, ran by the same group, you know? And, um, you know, a lot of people took offense to it or whatever. It doesn't even matter. Like, it had just been nice to get two views or three views on a comic sometimes, right? And I think that's, I think that's one of the things that's missing from criticism. Now, is that cost effective? No, no, but who gives a shit? It's just the way it should be. Everyone else can talk about the way it should be. I can talk about the way it should be. Um, so I'll read something for that. Uh, most likely what's going to be the other five that I um, record is going to be five Star Trek comics. I, saw, I, I actually asked to pull, take this from my pool list. And at Gmart, you know, apparently this is popular or people have latched onto it. Or IDW is just grasping at like their last, uh, you know one of their uh, their uh, licenses, but like a lot of Star Trek comics are coming out. You know, they, they sold me on this series that's gonna like continue on from the continuity, you know, I guess at the end of Star Trek Voyager, and it was gonna have a bunch of characters from, you know, the different shows. So like Lieutenant Paris is in here from Voyager, and then the captain and the star of the book is Cisco. Awesome. So let's continue on with that. You know, Worf was in it at the beginning, and then he goes off and takes the Defiant, you know, but they, they spun out a lot. Like, it's suddenly becoming like, you know, here's Strange New World. I haven't even watched the show yet, so hopefully there's no spoilers. So I got to decide what I'm going to do about that because I'm reading a lot of these big licenses. And um, and uh, they start to build up. Like, Ninja Turtles, I was like, okay, I'll read this Armageddon game thing. That's cool. I did read maybe five issues prior. I was going to read just the Ninja Turtle single. And then they decided to do this giant fucking event you know like a marvel dc style event that like there's a couple mini series as tie-ins i was like okay i'll jump in and then i just didn't read it i have a big stack of ninja turtles books i should be reading the ninja turtles usagi book um so the that i'll read for sure that's not too much reading and then blood of the virgin i took yesterday to read with me uh and i ended up um ended up actually rereading about half of chapter two so i was reading this just before i went to poland this is obviously a big Honker of a book, so and same with Love and Rockets, which I read some yesterday. Um, you know, so I, I didn't want to take it on the plane to bring it back. I knew I was going to buy a bunch of books. You guys will see that video later. And um, so yesterday, uh, I go, man, I really liked it, but I want to be remembered. I want to remember what's going on. So I end up reading like, and when I say half, I mean you know half the pages. But these are, you know, I mean there's significant uh, panels in there, right? So and I just enjoyed it all over again. Like I. At least these first two books, I really like it, you know, and this is one of those things where the art didn't appeal to me. And so I was like, eh, I don't know if I'm going to get it. I don't know if I'm going to get it. You know, then, you know, people were raving about it. Uh, loading the canon, actually, when he reread it, you know, he did the thing where he goes, it's good, but it's not as good as I remember it. But I feel like maybe you read it too fast because um, I've enjoyed these, you know, it's a little bit dense. And uh, I've really enjoyed this. At least the beginning, I've really enjoyed it. So we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to finish reading that. And then these guys came in yesterday, so I'll at least flip through them. Um, and it's nice because I was a little bit afraid. You know, sometimes when you're buying from Domino, you forget. You know, like it's a, one of those things where you attach it to the pre-order and it may not come. And so when I saw this come in from Domino, this Verge Escapement that I've already talked up a little bit, I was like, man, I thought I'd put that thought I put that pre-order together with this comp, this, uh, uh, but is it comic art? Art, whatever, you know, in this pre-order I did like the beginning of the year or the end of last year. So this is, um, I forgot the dude's name. Like a lot of, like a lot of like alt comics people. I'm sort of like, I like what they produce, but they're, sometimes they're annoying. Um, and he's actually doing, he's great. So don't get me wrong. I like him, but you know, sometimes like turn it down a little bit, bro. Um, he's also now running Comics Journal, which I'm really happy for because Comics Journal was a little bit boring probably last two years, you know, and it was like, I'm sure what they were doing was in what was, was important, but I, I remember like there's like one 45 page interview, you know, this is maybe a year and a half ago now. I'm like, man, I want Comics Journal. I want to support it, but like this sucks. And it was well done, beautiful. Great pictures of the person's art, you know, it was sort of aligned with comics. And there was another one that was more about some social issue. 
So I'm happy they did it, but I'm really happy that Austin, whatever the fuck his name is. I sort of want to know his name. Austin English is doing it now because it'll focus more on like, you know, I think I have the same taste in all comics. Obviously, I don't have the same taste in comics. I'm doing like five five favorite Spawn books and stuff, but uh, same taste in all comics where I just want the weird sort of art. You know, it's 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 got to be actually good if, you know, if you're going to do a story and stuff. Um, so uh, I like sort of, I like Austin English's comics. In fact, that made my top books of last year. So this one is, um, you know, uh, sort of a a zine a little bit. I guess we could say there's some comics in there. So very excited to get this. Um, aforementioned, the a these are just big interviews, so I better flip through and see what I'm looking at. Um, the aforementioned, though, loading the canyon, sort of set, sort of set a high bar for indie literary comics magazines, though. So, uh, but Austin English was always supposed to be this sort of newspaper scene, so <clears throat> I'm happy. I release some quality and style he, he has, and so I'm happy with that. And then this, I only vaguely remember buying. Um, the Have Mercy issue. What the hell would I buy? Hey, that's pretty funny. So, that's a Spider-Man spoof. Oh, bonding. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so a little Spider-Man spoof here from Domino Books. This actually looks awesome. Yeah, this looks plenty silly. Hopefully, hopefully it leans more towards, uh, you know, I'm hoping it's more of a transgressive adult theme. It doesn't look like it, actually. Wait, can you guys hear my dog drinking water? Okay. So anyway, that is what I'm going to read. I'll probably just flip through these. This won't be a read, but I will take them to the coffee shop. So that's today's reading. Later on today, I don't know. Um, I've been going live and reading like um, Crime and Punishment, which, you know, it's a comic channel. So why wouldn't you read Crime and Punishment? Um, but I actually have plans for a couple long form things and I just read them whenever I want. And so, you know, these are such big books. It'll be indefinite. Of course, you know, because I've mentioned it 7,000 times that my wife is Polish. So Crime and Punishment. So two Russian books, Crime and Punishment and then War and Peace. We'll start that eventually here. You end up reading like if I read an hour, that ends up being like between 10 and 20 pages, depending on on the font size. That is a smaller font size. But then, um, you know, over the years, I just had a bunch of, um, you know, Polish authors, um, you know, heard their names and stuff. I lived there for a while. So I decided I was going to do sort of a similar comp comparison thing with, um, with uh, Russian and Polish authors, you know, within the same 100 years, 200 years. And so Henry uh, Henrik Sienkiewicz is actually was very is very popular, like won a Pulitzer Prize, um, if not for this book, for um, was it a book called Wolpe? No, I, oh for the Deluge, which is the second in this series, you know. And a lot of people don't know it, and I get it, uh, and now I understand why because this is this is a, apparently not considered a great translation, but it's the one that Sienkiewicz um, sort of signed off on. And then there's a uh, one from the 90s that, like, you know, the Polish American Society or whatever um, funded. Uh, and it was translated by someone that was, like, already, like, a literary author on his own. And he actually changed it. You know, he actually tried to sort of rewrite it so that, like, contemporary um, audiences would like it. And that was, like, done in 1990. So that's in... So not only would I don't... I don't want to read that. I don't want a translator adapting it in any way. Um, that's also not in the public domain. Then I found out that there's another translation that, you know, Henrik was just happened to be friends with this dude that translated it, um, Jeremiah Curtin. But I guess back then you didn't have to, um, you didn't have to, if you were translating it, there was no copyright. So anyone can translate. So Henrik uh, Shinkevich actually was getting like a, 
licensing, like not a real licensing fee, but it was actually just getting paid to say that this was the official translation in, you know, 1800 or whatever, in the 1800s. And there was just another guy that translated it and I actually found that translation, but I don't know, I can't find anywhere where it's in print. Even this one is print to, you know, uh, print to order. It says like made in Las Vegas. So when I ordered it, it came like two days later, which is because it was printed here and then drop shipped or whatever. Um, so I'll be reading that. And then this one would, this one would be comparable more to uh, war and peace, right? Because it's about like more macro, you know, uh, people during a war or during a fight or something like that. Um, and so, like I said, I'm reading these indefinitely. I just want to read out loud. And then the one that I decided, and I didn't know very much about, um, Boleslav Proust, but, uh, the one I decided to compare and contrast with crime and punishment, more internal, more, um, more about, uh, a single set of characters, um, you know, a lot smaller than like what war and peace or what this, this Shinkevich book is supposed to be as the doll by Boleslav Proust. So. I'll be reading those as I feel like it. And then, you know, it's not even, it's not like it's an audio book. I talk during them and like have commentary and I talk to people that happen to stop by. The last things I'm gonna show for the Sunday setup are books that I need to put really far up on my reading list because I've been waiting for them or there's some kind of excitement for them. Um, I also haven't done a video on 20th Century Men because I actually need to, I actually think this is a really good book. It probably definitely end up in my top 10. So I need to like sit and actually write it down. It isn't one that I just would talk off the cuff for. Um, number one is uh, Mindset. Been waiting for Mindset for a while. I knew from the beginning I was going to just wait for the trade. So I've seen other people like it. Uh, looks pretty cool for me. To me, I like Zach Kaplan. You know, he has that right amount of um, right level. It's almost like, let's call it like, you know, tool or something. Right? Knows has a good idea of this pop sensibilities, but can do some interesting things around it. Actually, that's how I would also describe Dennis Camp. So not, not that they're the same books, same kind of writers or anything, but that idea. Then uh, Runoff from Tom Manning. So, um, you know, Tom Manning's just been talked about a lot in that Loading the Cannon or the Cannon or whatever the hell that zine was. There was an interview with him. And so um, put him on the radar. So I got all three of his books, but I want to read them. I want to read the oldest one first. So uh, Runoff is coming up uh, on the top. And those are ones I just want to sit down and read all the way through. Then I've been waiting for this Justin Graydon book for a while. You know, I read Justin Graydon in, in at least one issue of Now. I loved what, uh, you know, I love the solicit. A metalhead harvests a portion of his inner shoe to squeak forbidden floors. His band left him for stardom. His wife left him with their newborn baby. He, le uh, he leaves himself he leaves himself for shimming up the stripper pole to hang with the cosmic dust bunny. So, I mean, that's right in my wheelhouse. But uh, I really like this art, and it's that sort of what I've sort of mentioned before. A little bit uh, wacky. You know, maybe, I guess it's all in panel, but it's just a weirdo book. So, um, you know, kites talking to each other and stuff like that. So been waiting for this one for a while and uh you know there's a lot to read so so these i gotta sort of put them in front of my eyes so then i just grab them one day right because if i put them in the i put them in the uh in the black hole of my where my all my comics are and stuff i'm gonna forget about them which is what happened with watchmen i have no idea where it, it's in a stack somewhere i just don't know where watchmen is so at least that's a reread i'm not like losing anything but uh yeah, I was going to watch, read Watchmen yesterday. I just don't know where I put it. So it'll turn up. I just got to gotta go in there and start moving boxes around and then it'll turn up. So anyway, that's the Sunday setup. I will talk to you guys throughout the week. And then I won't do videos again for months because my kids will be around. <laughs>